We may all be here, but I'm not all there. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop and it is good to be back. It's been three weeks that we haven't had a, a live. So uh, yeah, um, you get to see my face again. Hey, <laughs> um, we're having a little bit of fun. So if you're new to the uh, the lives, we do one every Tuesday or usually every Tuesday. And uh, the first little bit here, I give you a heads up on what's happening in the Wood by Right world. Um, so in three weeks, I'm actually gonna be down at Atlanta. Uh, we're gonna be at Workbench Con and I'm thinking about doing a meetup um, in Atlanta at the hotel there. Um, I haven't quite mashed out the details, so stay tuned for that if you are in the Atlanta area and want to uh, meet up and maybe go for a coffee or something of that nature. Um, yeah, um, I'm also playing with the idea of starting to hold a few classes in the shop. Uh, they would be very small, like four, maybe five people at most. Um, but if you're interested in that, um, send me an email or contact me and I might put you on the list to uh, let you know. Um, so we'll be playing with a few local people first before we actually start figuring out uh, what we'll do with those. But uh, yeah, lots of fun things coming up. Um, I want to say there's something else. Oh, there's an MWTCA meet in Milwaukee that I'm not going to be able to go to because I'll be in Atlanta. Um, there's an MWTCA meet the week after I get back from Milwaukee, uh, I get back from Atlanta, down in Indiana, and so I'm not going to be able to make that one because I don't want to be gone two weekends in a row. Um, so I'm skipping a bunch of the MWTCA meets, which is kind of sad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll be getting to more of them here soon. Uh, there's one coming up in April that is actually just around the corner here that I co-host, so I will be at that one. Um, so stay tuned. Um, yeah, we are here to talk about uh, toothing plants. Uh, this is an interesting tool that most people um, don't really come across. And one of the reasons why it kind of disappeared is that you find a lot of toothing plants are made out of wooden bodies. And it's one of those tools that Stanley never really made a toothing plane. Now, they made toothing irons that went in other things, but they never actually made a toothing plane. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit. But today I want to take a look at what is it, what do you do with it, how is it used, um, and really kind of go into depth. And so if anyone has any questions or thoughts or things that they want me to talk about, throw those in the chat. If you are watching this recorded, then go down into the description down below and you'll see a list of all of the questions with timestamps beside them so you can jump to that. Um, so, yeah, toothing plane. Um, anything in there before I jump into this? Uh, no. Cool. The, uh, the toothing plane is a very interesting tool. Um, and it, it's kind of a weird thing because the blade is almost 90 degrees. It's usually about 5 or 10 degrees back. Um, so the bevel still is down, or <laughs> the bevel is backwards. Um, but it's just like any coffin smoother, except for the iron is way, way up here. I don't have my mic on. <laughs> oh, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> if your voice isn't big enough for it to carry all the way I'm across. I'm rusty. Well, <laughs> yeah, we haven't done it in three weeks. <laughs> uh, but the really interesting thing about this is, I need to grab my mallet to take it apart, is the plain iron on this has all of these weird ridges on it. And let me zoom in on this, and you can actually see all of these tiny ridges running on the flat side of the iron. And so when you come over here to the bevel, you'll see all of these tiny, tiny little teeth sticking out here. Let me see if I can get in a little closer on this, because it is here. Out of focus is what it is. No, it's not. Let me focus that close. There we go. So there you can see the ridges, and I flip it over, you can see those tiny, tiny teeth on there. And those are what do the cutting on a toothing plane. Um, and the, the odd thing about that is when you have one iron that's making one big curl, that's a lot of chances for it to get tear out and to actually get underneath things. Whereas when you have all of these tiny teeth cutting in, you're basically stacking up a whole bunch of planes side by side. And then on top of that, you put the iron in at over 90 degrees, and now you have a plane that's just plain weird. Um, and the, the crazy thing about these is the uses. Um, and I say uses because everyone is going to give you a different explanation about what they were originally used for. Um, the, the fact is, someone decided to make one one day, and it, there have been many, many, many uses that have been attributed to them over the years. What the original use of the first person to make it was, no one really knows. 
Um, the interesting thing is that they're going to leave a rough surface. They're not going to leave a glass smooth finished surface like you expect with a smoothing plane because they're well, these little planes side by side. But they will take an, a uniform even shaving. So you're always going to be cutting the same depth across the board. And I'll be getting into setting it up and showing you how it works in a little bit. Um, and so it's not going to give you the, the finished surface you want. But it is going to be a little bit more delicate on the surface you do. It's not going to be tearing it up because it's all of these tiny little cutters. Each one is not going to be causing as much tear out beside it. And so because of that, you can work against the grain and in some weird situations. I'll show you that in a little bit. So a lot of people like to use that for really weird situations and it will plane it down. Once you get really close, then you can come into the card scraper and one, two, three passes and you're clean. Um, whereas with a smoothing plane, unless you really spend the time to set it up, this can be very difficult on difficult grain. Another place where this really shines is if you are going to be laminating two boards together and you want something for the surface to really bond into, particularly if you are doing veneers on a surface. And so you can use the toothing plane to rough up both sides of it and it gives a mechanical bond for the glue to hold into. When you're working with hide glues, that's very important. Um, you need that in there. Whereas uh, PVA and epoxy, eh, you don't really need that mechanical bond quite as much. Um, but for veneers, they have a tendency to loosen up over time because they can absorb moisture. The moisture can get down to that high glue. The high glue disbonds and it just works better if there is um, uh, some mechanical advantage on there. So prepping the surface with a toothing plane makes it great for applying veneers. The next thing is when you get the veneers down, you have this really delicate surface. And if you go over it with a plane and it catches the grain wrong, suddenly you, you rip up the whole veneer. Um, and that's where this can really come in. You can do that planing work and it's a little more delicate on the surface. So you're not going to be tearing apart the veneer. You get it close, then you can come into the card scraper and one, two, three, clean it up and you're happy. Uh, there's a lot of other uses. I know of some people who actually use it kind of the way you would use a scrub plane, not taking a really heavy shaving, but working through um, the, um, machine cut wood. Um, rough saw on, there we are. <laughs> um, and I, there are a bunch of other attrib attributes to these. Um, so they're, they're kind of an interesting tool that doesn't have any one use. And so because of that, they've, they're kind of that weird thing where most of these specialty tools have one use. This cuts a curve. And that's it. <laughs> um, there's a lot of tools that just have that one thing that they do. Whereas this has a lot of things that it does, but those things are very odd and um, misplaced. Um, so there aren't very many of them. But if you're doing one of those things I mentioned, you'll find that this actually really works out well. So let's take a little closer work, a closer look at how this actually um, comes together. Any questions before I really jump into that? Nothing yet? Okay. Oh, good. People haven't been asking questions. <laughs> oh yeah, for those of you who went to the peach meet, I hope that was good. Um, I was wanting to go to that, but it was uh, uh, right after getting back from our vacation and Sarah wouldn't like me flying off to Atlanta and then flying off to Atlanta again three weeks later. Um, so I've barely been home with work. Though. I know, that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't want me jump running away on you like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't make it to the peach meet either this year. Wow, I skipped a bunch of MWTCA. Next year. <laughs> so uh, let's You're take the this one apart. who schedules the vacates. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, you'll notice it does not have a chip breaker. And the reason being is there's no reason you're going to ever use a chip breaker on, um, on the iron itself. It's just not going to, to work out right. Um, so toothing planes will not have a, a chip breaker on them. Uh, this one is an old style um, and someone has really beat the snot out of it. Um, so I've been wanting to grind off the mushroom, but I haven't gotten to it. I don't use it that often, but uh, yeah. Um, now in the in the video, it's going to look like there's some chips out of it, but it's actually very, very clean. There's just a little bit of surface on here, and I'm going to be cleaning it up. I left this unsharpened. Uh, it's relatively sharp, but it's not great. Um, so I'm going to show you how to sharpen it here in a little bit. But basically what they did is they took a regular iron, and they cut in all of these slots on the back here. Now when they originally would have blacksmithed them, they would basically treat it like a file and they would come in with the knife that would actually cut the file marks and um, kind of chisel it into the back of the steel. And then they could polish off the back and you'd be left with just the valleys of all of those ridges. And then when all those marks are in the back of the steel, then all you have to do is put the bevel on this side and those little teeth stick out right on the edge. Uh, this particular one, the last one, last person put a really nice hollow grind in there, which makes it easy to sharpen. Um, not necessary, but uh, it's there. 
And uh, yeah, um, so when you put it in, you slide it in, bevel towards the back. It would be a bevel down plane, but it is at a very high angle. And then, move that out, you can slide the wedge in. And I like to put the iron down until it touches the wood underneath. Get the wedge in a little bit, and then I'm going to wiggle this back up a little bit. I don't want the iron actually touching the surface underneath. Tap it down in place. And now, our iron isn't sticking out. So, what I can do is then I'll put my finger underneath where it should come out and give it... I'm going to keep advancing it. Oop, there was a hair too far. Or was it? Yeah, it's pretty close. Let's see what we got. So, take it over to the board. Nope, good. Right where we want to be. So I'm not taking any shaving yet. Just going to give it a light tap. Tap the wedge. Nope. There we go. I'll show you what the uh, shavings in this look like. I think I'm just a little bit off center. Yeah, I'm taking more shavings on this side of the plane than that side of the plane, so I'm just going to give it a light. That feels about right. One tap more. There we go. And the shavings on this kind of come out like uh, weird pencil shavings. I got a question when you have a moment. Yeah, I'm just going to pull these out and show you this because they're kind of funky. They're these tiny little curls. And each one of these is its own individual shaving. And that's what you get. It's almost like a, um, a pencil sharpener shavings. And kind of an interesting little tool. What question you got? So Alex wants to know, Alex Adams, oh, would a toothing plane remove material faster than a scrub plane? No. Okay, there's another part of the question. Come on. And would it be, and would it be bad to put a cam camber on a toothing plane blade? Um. I have never seen a cambered toothing iron. Would it work? Um, not with such a high angle. Um, yeah, because it would not. It would not bite into it. It would just. It would just stop. Um, if you had a lower angle, yes, you could. Um, I do not know what the advantage to that is. Um, the reason people would use this on rough wood um, is because it's a little bit more delicate, especially if you're working with woods that are. Um, very stringy or prone to tear out. Um, sometimes you don't know where the grain is going, what's happening, and so you can get into it with this a lot easier. Um, and this will work a little bit faster than the smoothing plane will. Um, so you can take a relatively heavy shaving, 100, maybe maybe two hundredths of an inch, um, and, and still leave yourself with a surface that's not going to have a lot of tear out. Whereas in the smoothing plane or any other plane, you go to two hundredths of an inch um, and you hit the grain wrong, it's going to tear out. So that's the big benefit of that. Good question, though. Um, yeah, I don't, I've never seen one with a camber. I think that's the, that's the one plane in the shop that everyone will agree you, you don't camber it. <laughs> okay, I have to say it because there's probably someone out there who does. <laughs> and they're madly typing away in the chat right now. What are you talking about? I always put a camber. Such and such a person taught me how to do that with a camber. Yeah, okay. Um, so when sharpening this, you sharpen it basically the exact same as you do any other iron. Um, let me bring this down and make sure it's all in focus. Hey, we got focuses here. Uh, so I've got my coarse, uh, my, excuse me, extra coarse, my fine, and my extra fine diamond plates. One little squirsh, squirsh of uh, Windex, or actually this is the, the cheap window knockoff. I've been working on that bottle now for four, five years. This is the second bottle I've had in the shop, so in this shop. <laughs> um, so on this one, because the back of this um, is... It looks much worse than it is, but it's not quite shiny, and I want well, nice well, and shiny well, up well, at the tips. you got to switch your camera. That would help, wouldn't it? The back of it's not nice and shiny, and I want nice and shiny right up at the tips. So we're going to start by flattening this out. And uh, it's going to work just like any other plane. Put it on here, a couple fingers down. I'm just going to do a couple passes on here and see what it looks like, because it's never going to look completely shiny. 
you're always going to see down in the ridges um, where um, it, it'll still be dirty underneath. You're only going to be hitting the tops of these. And I need a little bit more on this one. And it sounds really funky. <laughs> This one's going to need a little more, actually. Yeah, this one was actually hand filed. You can, if you look really closely at it, you'll see all the teeth are different spacing. It's, it's really close, but someone had a lot of skill, but it wasn't machine cut. Ooh, that's getting close. Just have a couple spots where it's not touching right up at the tip. Why am I switching from one to the other? Because I like training different muscle groups and I like training different methods of doing it. Oh, still not quite there. Almost, not quite. <laughs> Trying to make sure I put even pressure on the tip as I'm going back and forth. Here, let me show you this. I don't know if I can get this on camera, but I'm actually finding because this was hand forged um, and all of these teeth were individually cut, there's a couple of dark spots right here and right here. And those are spots where the chisel that actually impacted this uh, was a bit deeper. And so those have slightly smaller teeth. And so they're taking a little bit more work to hit those because they're actually a little farther back in. Which is kind of fascinating. I like working with tools that uh, someone made on a fire in a forge without electricity. There's a history there. There's a number of people who have used it over the years. There we go. That's shiny all the way across. And so now, You'll still see those dark spaces on camera, um, but the actual Honey, teeth... We can't see it. Helps if I flip that. The actual teeth, I'm going to try and move it back and forth, are shiny all the way across. Though you'll still see dark spots which are down in the groove. So I've gotten the back flattened out, and if I rub my finger up this way, I can feel all those tiny little burrs where this steel has kind of rounded over the back that way. So, before we go on, I'm just going to touch up all of those. We have them all shaped and cut down, so it doesn't take very much more. Just polish them down a little bit more. Just like that, the back is now nice and clean and shiny. Is that Super Chat? Gary Leonard. Yes, this is a good you. time for a joke. Ah, uh, yes, what we got? I was not ready for jokes. Right, well, you work on that. Early. So once we've done, we've done the back on here, we're going to do the bevel. And it's exactly the same as any other plane. We've done the back, we're going to flip it over and do the bevel. There's nothing else special to this um, other than the burr is going to feel weird because right now the burr is wrapped around on the bevel side and I want to push it back over. So let's give this a little squirt, squirt, squirt. And then I set this until I feel that bevel. Probably all it needs. Yep. Yeah, not a little more. A little more. The nice thing about a toothing plane is if you get a chip in it, oh well. <laughs> it's, it's basically a, a plane that has a whole bunch of serious chi chips in it. So now, we work up the grit a little bit. Medium. Fine. Got a nice polish on there. So, focus. There we go. So you can see this is a hollow grind, so I have a polish at the nose and at the heel. And if I run my finger on it, I'm feeling the burr sticking out ever so slightly onto the flat side. So I'm going to put it back onto the finest flat side down. Just flip that burr one more little time. 
clean off the plates. And then on to the strop. One, two, three. And the problem with the with this is I have to go in line with it. I can't actually run diagonal because all those teeth will grab onto it. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm not going to see the burr come off because it's like hundreds of little burrs. And that's sharp. It's grabbing my finger. Yeah, that's what I want right there. Happiness. So we got a sharp iron. Do you have a mom joke? She's chuckling. She's wondering whether or not it's okay to say that one. Oh, ah, jeez. <laughs> oh. Guys, I just got home from work like an hour oh, and a half. Oh, she had a bad ago. day. So it's been a long day. Okay, what do you, what do you call when you eat a clock? When you eat a clock? Mm-hmm. Well, I know when it comes out the other end, it's stinky time. It's time consuming. Oh, I got it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time consuming. I had a really good one the other day and I can't remember it. I'm so mad at myself because it was really funny. <laughs> now I can then go back and read all the comments as I was staring way too hard trying to find that joke. <laughs> stinky time. It's a time consuming. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. So let's put this in here. Gary, I hope that lived up to your standards. Sorry it took me a while. <laughs> Did he have a question? No. I, uh, Ken Carlisle has a question. This is a good. Oh, sure. What do we got? Is it too late to get my $10 back? Yep. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ken asks Is the Veritas low angle jack tubing. Bleh. Jack toothing blade used for the same thing. It's always been a mysterious option to me. Yes, it is the, the same thing. Um, with the caveat that I've never... <sighs> with it being a low angle toothing plane, you don't have the added benefit of being able to do um, um, weird grain. I mean, unless you get the, the high angle, low angle toothing plane, um, you know, you put a 50 degree bevel on your toothing plane. In that case, you'll get some of the benefits from it, um, but not quite as much as you'll get with a 95 degree or, or the 85 degree um, iron. So it's, uh, yes, it basically does the same thing. It just won't handle the difficult grain quite as well as one that's up vertical. Um, but yeah, basically the same thing. The, the, the big reason that they do that is for veneer workers um, who want to rough the surface down um, because it's one of the few places where you can still get a toothing iron that fits a standard plane. So let's set this thing in. Oop, sticking a little. I'm just going by feel. My fingers are underneath here. I think I went too far already. Pretty sure I went too far. Yeah, I'm taking off a really heavy cut there. And I clogged it right up. <laughs> so what you can see is my mouth here. I stuck my foot in it. Well, there we go. And it's fully clogged up. All those little teeth stuck in there. So I have it sticking out a little too far. I thought I'd give it a try. But on this one, I probably have it sticking out, what, uh, two hundredths of an inch or more. And uh, that causes problem. Oh. But. Really cool shavings. There we go. I love Alex this. said they were Sarah sized. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's redo this. Do I have something sticking in there? It's one of the things you have to make okay. sure with wooden planes. Um, sometimes the Fix front of the your mouth. Camera. Thank you. Sometimes with the front of the mouth, you'll actually get um, splinters sticking out, and that'll be a spot for a, uh, um, a curl to catch on. And so I just run my finger up the front side of it, run the nail on there, and make sure there's nothing catching it. Especially with old ones that have been sitting around for a while. Okay, try it again. Always tap the wedge. There we go.
show you what the surface looks like. It's going to be hard to do on this one because this has a lot of grain. Let me do it on someone that's not quite so clean of a grain. Because the, the surface on it looks like, um, like wood grain. <laughs> because, well, it is. Um, you see, there's a good spot with it. The depth of that joke was about as deep as your toothing blade. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we slip over to this one. Trying to find a good spot to actually show this because the oak... Um, Oh, here, let me handheld it. There we go. Because then I can get down here and actually show you the glint off of the wood. <clears throat> Focus. There we go. Three. So, let me see if I can actually get this in focus because it just looks like wood grain in the camera. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see it. Right up in here. You can see toothing tracks, but let me put it on something thinner. It's, I wish that I could show in reality some of the small fine things you can see in person, but uh, cameras make it very difficult to make those actually pop out. So this is a piece of poplar, and uh, there's a reason that a lot of people like it. Because it's... <laughs> got it. She got it. Got it. <laughs> she was focusing on something. Oh, I clamped my vice in. <laughs> I, What's that? I clamped my camera stand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this over here and show it really close up on this. Okay. So here we've got nice and smooth surface. And then here. Why did you jam up already? This one's not happy with me. Well, I guess you can see the, the first pass. I don't know if you guys can see it. But here I'm left with these really nice even tracks. Those aren't even showing up on there, are they? Let me see if they I can are. get closer. They are? I mean, I can see them. I don't know if they can see them. I can see clearly now. The camera's not moving. now. There we go. Now you can see those tracks running across the grain. And those tracks, the nice thing about those is that they have a mechanical bond that you can stick the glue in. It's lighting. They're saying it's too bright. Um, yeah, I was thinking of the way I can rake it across there. But I want to show something else with this. The, the weird thing about it is if your grain, if your marks are always going the same direction, then you're not going to be taking the surface down very much. But if you take a bunch of passes one direction, and then you turn the plane 45 degrees and you take more passes, then you're taking an even shaving all the way across, and it actually allows you to, um, to um, what's the word for? Um, take it all down at the same pace. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to actually flatten the surface. I got to figure out why this mouth is actually jamming up too much just on this side over here. <laughs> this is a very tight mouth. <laughs> Let's give it a try. It's a tight so, lip. It doesn't want to give its secrets. It does not want to give its secrets. So let me <laughs> focus in on this point here. Let's see if we can get this. So right now all of the, the tracks are going this way. So I'm going to come in at 45 degrees. And I'm going to run across. And the toothing plane will make it a little bit easier that I didn't hit this area here, so I know this is a little bit of a lower spot. Makes it a little bit easier to see. Then I can go 45 degrees the next direction. And now I've got this nice hitch ha hitch hash, hash, hash mark. <laughs> so then I can go 45 degrees the other direction. And I'm very, very lightly taking everything down at an even amount. And I'm also leaving a really nice surface on there that I can glue into. But if I'm working with something that is hard grain, then I can come in with a chip breaker. Oh, it's poplar. I hate poplar. 
and then come in with a few passes of this, clean up any of those marks, and be left with a buttery smooth surface again. Um, so if I'm working with very difficult grain, this can bring it out um, quite a bit. But that hash mark where you're going this direction, 45 degrees, and then 45 degrees, and you keep crossing it different directions, gives you this beautiful surface that is perfectly even and flat, um, but it has that toothing pattern that the glue can grab into. And so if you're ever bonding a thin surface down, hitting it with a toothing plane will give you that gorgeous surface you can glue down to, particularly for uh, veneers. And that's probably the place where most people think about it the most often, especially with the, uh, the, the low angle toothing, plane, uh, toothing irons um, that you can get. Those are, yeah, it's probably the, as a matter of fact, I think that's what they even advertise it as, a veneering iron, if I remember correctly. They're all mocking you right now. What about? What is what? What tool were you just using in your hand? Well, it's a card scraper. What did I say? It's a chip breaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> All today, my brain. You been said blue. it, and then you grabbed it, and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> I had two fillings today, and I'm pretty sure because he had to put a ton of. Um, and, and um, Novocaine? Novocaine into it. And he, he's, normally it's like one full shot one side, one full shot the other side. And it ended up being six shots over the course of the hour. And every 10 minutes or so, he had to keep putting in more. And I uh, kept metabolizing it. So I don't know if I metabolized it. It's still in my brain or what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having fun with it today. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Now, the interesting thing about this one is I don't rarely use it. Because um, usually when I'm working difficult grain, I'm going to go to the card scraper, I'm going to go to the, uh, the cabinet scraper, or I'm really going to set up my smoothing plane to do it right. Um, so this is, this is down the list a little ways from my normal things. Um, and I don't do a whole lot of veneer work. Um, if you want to see it in use a lot, um, go to um, Hand Tool School. Um, Shan Rogers, he's been doing a lot of uh, marquetry, uh, which marquetry is making a painting out of little pieces of veneer. Um, and he's been using it a lot for that, for the gluing down of all those tiny little pieces. That's very, very useful. Um, but I don't remember it clogging up on me like this last time. So again, this is okay. Every time I do something live, you know why I thought it's I wasn't up. going to. I wasn't going to go ahead and test it ahead of time because I wanted to show it being sharpened. It's because it needs to go to the dentist, just like you. <laughs> yes, do think playing needs work? <laughs> and I don't know. Why everything looks good in there? <laughs> yeah, nice sharp edge. He didn't sleep well good last night, guys. I so. did not sleep well <laughs> last night either. Let me give it one more try. So I'm gonna set it in until it touches the wood. Put the iron in the wedge. The iron in the wedge <laughs> in behind it. And then I'm gonna slide the wedge down and back the iron up just a little bit. Set the wedge, oh. and then. Tap it forward until I can just feel it touching. I want to make sure I can feel the same amount on both sides of it. And just a little more. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. But even with that one patch, it's clogging right up. Huh. Getting nice shavings out of it. Really nice little, tiny little curls coming up out of there. But it's all clogged up. Let's see. Let's see if they continue to move forward. Yeah, they're continuing to move. So do you call a plumber or a dentist in this <laughs> I love those little things. Look at this. Those, those are cute. But on the other side, it is all <sighs> impacted. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> um, what would cause that? Yeah. It's got to be like wrapping back around and they're going back into, because uh, this one has a very tall mouth and this one isn't, hasn't been used much at all. Um, usually with a, with a wooden body, what you'll get is as the seasons go, especially if you're in an air-conditioned 
um, shop as it used to be, um, every season or so, you'd take a few more plane shavings off of the plane to take it back into flat and true. Um, and so as you do that, the mouth actually opens up more and more. But because this is such a high angle, the mouth has almost no space at all. Let me show this. And whoop. here. Let's see if I can get a camera to focus down in there. Yeah, we can do that. So on this one, there is almost no space at all down in there. There's about a sixteenth of an inch from the iron to the edge of the mouth. And that is up about that far into the body. So I've got three quarters of an inch where there's only about a sixteenth inch of movement, which is probably why this plane hasn't been used that much. It's got a lot of life left in it. Um, so they put these notches in here at kind of the point at which this would be turned into a junk plane um, because you would have this much life in the plane from here up um, until you'd run out. But that mouth is really tight. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more and figure out what's up with it. What questions do we have? Uh, let's see. Alex asked, do toothing planes work any different if they are coffin shaped or square? No, no. Um, the, the, the reason for a coffin smoother or the coffin shape of a plane is number one, it's far more comfortable. If the back end of it is narrowed down to the point that it fits into the palm of your hand, it makes it much easier to push. Kind of rounding over the front end makes it easier to wrap your hand around here. So it's a little more ergonomic to make it thinner here fatter out here where the iron is. Um, also, with a smoothing plane, you're not flattening a board. A smoothing plane is something that's designed to hit a spot. And it may not be the whole board. It may just be, you know, a, a spot about this big in a board where there's a tiny piece of tear out and you just want to kind of dish it out. And having a smoother body, excuse me, having a smaller body that can ride those undulations um, allows you to hit just those spots. And if you go and, and feel um, old boards, um, old uh, furniture, you will often find uh, furniture that has been dished out. It looks flat, but you run a hand across and you realize that um, it's not flat. Um, it has been um, dished. <laughs> um, and and that's, that's one of the things that we... Um, kind of have a, a weird mindset with is that our idea of the of a perfect surface is something that is perfectly smooth. It's been run through a machine and cleaned out and that's um, historically speaking a, a newer thing. Um, so having that, that coffin shape, smaller size, um, allows you to hit just those false, small spots. You get into the bigger planes and you get to the point where they ride over those low spots and they only hit the high spots. In that place, you're actually flattening the whole board down as opposed to just hitting individual locations. <laughs> what? Is a smaller body riding the modulations what you call <coughs> when she goes surfing. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a video I'd like to make. Yeah, we, we found that gravity is a bit stronger around Sarah. Oh. Um, and uh, she's always dropping something. The gravitational. And pull. she's not always dropping things. <laughs> they but just fall. Things around her, on the table beside her, on the armrest beside her, they just suddenly thwomp. <laughs> <laughs> Can't explain it. <laughs> I'm banned from certain beverages in my boss's office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's deli. It's it's usually uh, uh, without. Exaggerating, it's usually every other night her phone will randomly fall off of her end table. And uh, we don't know what's, what's causing it, but uh, it's a Sarah thing. That's why I love her. She has an amazing attractive force. Yeah. <laughs> what's next? <laughs> uh, Muhammad Soki? Not sure if I'm saying that right. Sorry. Can you compare it with a smoothing plane in practice? I mean, show that smoothing tears out, but toothing doesn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, that was something I was wanting to do earlier. I'm going to find a spot for it. Um, yeah, here we go. I actually had a <laughs> spot on this board picked out for it. 
And let me see if I can get this. Yeah, here we are. So, and here, can I get the camera to focus in on that so you can actually see what it is? That's the great question. Oh, that's why it's over there. Work around. And I want to focus in on this knot here. So let's see if we can get this to focus. Yeah, we can see it there. So right here, I've got tear out left from when I smoothed it earlier with this plane. Um, and on this side of the knot, I don't have any tear out because it's going with the grain. On this side of the knot, it's going against the grain. Uh, so if I can come in with the toothing plane, oh, that's right, I move the iron. Oop, too much. Maybe a bit too much. You tap the nose to retract the iron a little bit. That feels about you right. You need to get like a beat or a rhythm. You're really. <laughs> Go 45 the other way. And you can see, already behind it, I'm clearing out that tear out that was behind it. And right there, there's still a bit, let me actually get a little closer on this. I need a longer HDMI cable. So I can get way over here. There we go. Close up on that knot right there. Focus. Here we go. So before we had a whole lot of tear out right here, and now we've got a nice clean surface. There's still some tear out over here where it was deeper. And then you can see on this side over here where it was cleaner. This is where the toothing plane can run right over it and not worry about the tear out that's there. Let me see if I can go a little farther and get rid of this tear out. It's a little deeper. It's going to take a while to get into that one. But yeah, this whole area here was covered in tear out. Let me see if I can find a spot. Oh, here. Don't need to find a spot. I'm going to make a spot. So if I dish that area, I'm trying to go against the grain over here. I dished the area out a little bit. So now the smoothing plane rides over it. Oh, here, there, there's a spot. This knot right here. There, I just created a bunch of tear out. So we got that chunk of tear out right there. Let me see if I can make that disappear with the toothing plane. You're doing a terrible job, I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, a few passes one direction. You pass in the other direction. You have to get to go down through almost a sixteenth of an inch. It's a pretty deep tear out. Yeah, it's almost all gone. You can see how there's just a little bit more depth here. See if you can get there to that. There. Basically gotten rid of all that tear out that was right here a moment ago. 
So that's the difference between a toothing plane and a smoothing plane. The smoothing plane, well, now this isn't really set up to be a really fine smoothing plane at the moment. It has a fairly large mouth and uh, the iron's not very sharp. So when I hit that one spot, it didn't take much. One pass and we got a big chunk of tear out. Whereas I can hit with this. And even with it clogging up, I was finding as long as I change directions, it seems to continuously keep shaving. So, but it's, it's weird. It's completely clogged right now. I'm going to so, play with that one more. Chris Brush <sighs> asked, and we've had some people join later, so can you kind of do a quick recap of why you use the toothing plane? Yeah, uh, so uh, the, to, to recap, a toothing plane, no one really knows what the intention of the original person who decided to put teeth onto their iron was. Um, but it has many different applications. One is it's far more delicate on the surface. Yeah, I'm going to leave a fairly rough surface, but I can come in with a card scraper and in just a few passes, here, I can take that rough surface that I just had, and now with the card scraper, I can smooth it out and get to a really nice, clean, smooth surface. Um, and so it's a very delicate tool to do really weird things. So especially if you're going to be working with veneer, if you've put down all your veneer, and all of those pieces are little different heights, you don't want to take this plane onto it because all it's going to take is one little spot and you ripped up a piece of veneer. <laughs> Any tear out when you're working with wood that's only a sixteenth or thinner, um, you need to be really, really careful with it. And that's where a toothing plane really shines. Um, on top of that, it leaves that rough surface. Um, it's, it's still flat, it's perfectly flat, but it's rough. And so because of that, um, it gives you something for the glue to bond into. Um, particularly working with high glues, um, they really benefit from having something to hold onto. Um, not having a perfectly smooth surface um, gives them a little more strength. Um, and so you'll, use, you'll see it a lot used in veneers, but then a lot of people use it for other things. Um, a lot of people use it as kind of like you would use as a scrub, scrub plane. Not to take off a lot of material, but to work with um, lumber that's rough sawn. Um, and so there's a lot of other applications and a lot of people will tell you, uh, this is why it was made. <laughs> and someone will say, no, this is why it's made. And you'll see all sorts of different theories on it. Um, kind of like the Stanley number one. Why in the world did Stanley make a number one? I don't know, but people so bought it. Go, We're number one. We're number but one. But the weird thing about it is, almost all toothing planes you're gonna find are wooden. Stanley never made a, a traditional toothing plane. Um, at least never they know it. I'm sure someone in the comments is going to point out, yeah, there's the Stanley 645 that was a 90 degree toothing plane. Um, because it's, it's like 80, 85 degrees, and so it's a very, very high angle plane. Um, they made toothing plane iron. Actually, I don't know if Stanley even made toothing plane irons. Um, I've seen them retrofit for a few other things. I know Veritas makes them for their low angle. Um, and I've seen a few others that make them for the, stand, the standard um, Stanley variants. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's kind of a weird thing that doesn't have a particular use. And most of the things I can do with this, I can also do with the card scraper, or I could do with the smoothing plane, or I could do with other things. Um, but there's very few uses where that's the tool for the job, because um, it's kind of a weirdo. Except for the veneer work. There's a lot of places in veneer where a toothing plane is really what you want. And you don't want that, the low angle, you want something that's high angle, so that when you're hitting um, grain, you're not going to be popping it out and tearing it out like you would on the surface of the veneer. So, yeah. Is that another super chat? It is. You Who answered Muhammad? Muhammad's question. Ah, doesn't have a question? Well, he are, I, that was the one, two questions ago I asked ah. you. Well, what, uh, do you have a joke ready? What happens if you slap some, what happens if someone slaps you at high frequency? Uh, what? It hurts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like, that. <laughs> I like when I get pull the science jokes out for you. What other questions we got? We got uh, what? Ten minutes left. Yeah. Um. So, Sean popped on late. Um. So when you sharpen the toothing plane, you sharpened it similar to a regular iron. Yeah, it's sharpened exactly the same as a regular iron. Um, you just, when you flatten the back, 
you don't want to flatten out all the teeth. Um, it's, it will naturally be, um, you'll have ridges in the back, um, and you'll never be able to clean out inside those ridges. So you don't worry about any little bits of rust that appear inside the ridge. You're never going to be able to clean them out. You're never going to treat it. <coughs> just make sure you oil it from time to time to try and mitigate that. Um, the thing you're worrying about is you just want the back to be shiny on the tip of each one of those little teeth. And a lot of these old ones are hand forged, and so the teeth aren't perfectly standard. You'll have a few small teeth and a few bigger teeth and a few small teeth because um, you don't need it to be perfectly standard as long as about half the space is teeth and half the space isn't teeth, then you're good. What's next? So the only other question that I pulled out is not related to your topic. If okay, you're ready well then we'll wrap it up early unless anyone puts anything in the chat. Um, yeah, I know, Ken, the, the joke was a little sad. I'm, I'm off my game today. I'm a little <laughs> rusty. I'll be per 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 Y'all, next week is James's birthday. You're not supposed to say that. Oh, are you kidding me? I am making sure that they are prepared. Valentine's Dead Day. Damn it. <laughs> not ready for another joke. Hang on. Well, I guess I'll have to ask his question. He's super chatted. Um, <laughs> like how you can use his name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, what do you recommend for a slick? I need one bad, two to three inches, and don't want a cheap one. Buy an old one and rehab or just new? What brand? Um, yeah, slicks, oof, yeah, yippa, whoopa, nacha. Um, they expensive. Um, yeah, and they're getting more and more expensive because a lot of people really want them right now. Um, I have a three inch and a two inch, and I've only used them once or twice, so they're not something I come up with that much, <clears throat> unless you're doing timber framing, in which case then you're using them all the time. Um, but that being said, the first place I would go and look right now is actually on Etsy. Um, there are several good, um, tool restores blacksmiths. So if you're looking for hatchets, adds, froes, um, slicks, things like that, Etsy is actually a really good place. You can get some pretty decent deals where someone who has actually sharpened it and cleaned it up for you. And they'll take antiques and do that. And there's a few blacksmiths that are making them, selling them on Etsy. Um, and I've gotten several good deals on that. Um, so that's probably the first place I would go. Um, number two, I, I would generally get an antique first. The price on a new one is astronomical um, and you don't really need anything terribly high quality in a, a slick unless you're going to be using it every day uh, it's one of those things that yeah you might have to sharpen it more often but it's not going to be a, a huge deal um, so rolling the dice on an antique um, is is worth the savings in my book um, but generally if you're going to buy an antique you're going to be spending a lot of time resharpening and grinding it um, that's where um, Etsy I have found some some good deals on that so that's probably where I would go first. Um, second, of course, is the MWTCA meets. Um, you'll almost always find slicks there. Um, and otherwise, go to handtoolfinder.com. There's a list of online sellers on there, and um, most of them will have slicks for sale. And they'll all tell you if they're sharpened or not, or need work, or there's a problem with it or not. So it's a good place to look. What? What do you call a dog underwater? What? A subwoofer. <laughs> I was going somewhere. Like, <laughs> I like yours better. <laughs> All right. Uh, hang on. I gotta put the time in on that one. It might be off a little bit. Sarah considers a normal size. It's just as a slick. Ha ha ha. Um. I like that one. <laughs> You notice he says it from a safe distance. I do. With expensive cameras. Okay, I hope you all like embarrass like post birthday messages. No, for you don't have to talk about being my birthday next week. Because mm -hmm. he hates it. He not, hates being recognized on his birthday. Don't. Do, do, it's birthdays. After 20, they don't count. <laughs> you sound like an old woman. Um, okay. At least I don't look like one. Well, this this has gone the wrong direction. Hang on, I got one question for you. One big one. One big one. <laughs> Cosman asked, after, no, not after, about four years ago, there was an episode that covered attaching the leather to the end vise using hide glue. Mm -hmm. Is that still the original leather, is still holding up 
or not. Yes, because um, originally I had one chop I did with um, um, contact cement and the other side with high glue. Um, and the one with high glue is still the original one from when I made the bench. Um, I'm thinking about actually cleaning it off and putting a new one down because it's starting to get beat up and, and chipped out, but it's not delaminating. Um, so yeah, high glue is definitely the way I would go. Um, actually, you know, I sh that would be a good one to do with a toothing plane to prep it first and then high glue it down. Although it's been holding perfectly fine the way it is, uh, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, yes, high glue um, is leather onto wood, and surprisingly, high glue is also leather onto steel. Um, I put these pads on, what, uh, almost seven years ago now. And uh, the leather is still holding on to the steel. And so, yeah. <laughs> High glue is definitely the way to go when bonding dissimilar things. It is a, a really good universal bonder. Um, as long as there's something for it to hold on to. So, yeah. Is that it then? Well, um, yeah. <laughs> Alex says, do you need a toothing plane? And I said, of course. Yes, you need one. You don't need it, but you need it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have only, yeah, in a project, I've only used the toothing plane two times. And both of them were for bonding glue. I don't think I've used it a third time. Although I've, sh I've shown it a few times in videos. It's one of those things I, uh, I bought this because I bought it for videos. If I wasn't doing videos, I probably wouldn't buy it. Um, but if I did any veneer work, I would use it quite often. So, yeah. I think that'll do it then. So uh, next week, um, come back. We're going to do the live Q&A. No, it's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we can have so much fun next week. Yes. So I'll see you all next week. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Get in the button. I'm still waiting. It's okay. Okay.